if any of you have watched my intro, you know I have a long history with a lot of home repair type of stuff that I started way back in the early 90s um, in the apartment business. So I've swapped out water heaters and um, I have never posted swapping out a water heater because I really don't get called for that. You know, why would my tile guy swap out my water heater? But I have many, many years uh, prior to ever touching tile doing plumbing of some sort or another. A normal water heater takes me roughly, any, depending on how hard it is to get to, anywhere from about 30 minutes to up to an hour. Um, average is about 45 minutes. Um, this one is mine and it went bad. And so when they go bad, what happens is, and I have a little water still residual there, water starts gurgling up through this hole. Actually, there's two holes there, pre-drilled holes. Um, and or your connections that go inside your water heater with those little nipples go bad. Um, and by the time, because this is hard plumbed in with three quarter copper, by the time you cut the copper and pull that out and all that stuff and find out that you're rusted on your nipple, which looks to be the case here, you're also rusted on the inside female end too. So if it's not the water heater, so this is all this is is like a turtle shell. That's a shell just protect everything. Like that. But in the end, what happens is they do go bad. And when they go bad, it's usually leaking from the bottom. There's nothing you can do about that. There's very little you can do about that, if anything. This water heater was built in 2004 in September, so I imagine it probably got put in in early 2005 or 2019. That's about 14 years. 14 years, anywhere, really depends on, on the quality of the water heater, and it depends on how much it gets used. Um, but anywhere from about 12 to about 20 years, you're going to fall into having to get a new water heater. And I've actually um, seen these located in attics before, which is absolutely nuts. And they'll have a little little plate or a little, uh, what do you call it, a little bottom part, like a tray. And that tray will have a little exit pipe that goes out in case it goes bad, but I can't imagine. So this is um, in my garage and it's relatively easy to get to, but there's a lot of stuff that I have to do. And, and the very first thing, if you ever contemplate changing out your home, own water heater, you're going to save yourself probably somewhere between about three and five hundred dollars on installation. Water heaters back in the 90s cost about a buck fifty, uh, about mm, yeah, about 150 dollars, 160 dollars tops. Now they're double the price. So this is the lowest end that I could get, and it is four hundred dollars and plus tax. And then you have all the parts you have to buy. So I have flexible line kit that I bought with those same nipples that I just showed you. I have a piece of uh, three-quarter copper. I have my plumbing box out. I have my torch out. <laughs> I have all the stuff out that I need in excess of what I need. I even have some sharp bites here because it's making it easier. And sharp bites really should not be used unless it's an open environment type situation, which I have here. So I have a gas line. I have some sharp bites, etc., etc. I also have a water cutoff. And the water cutoff is right there for your water heater, and that's a gate valve. And gate valves go bad after a while, and this one has gone bad because I turned it off last night to conserve some of the water that's spewing out of here. And when I went to turn it back on, it just turns and turns and turns and turns. So basically what happens is when you turn it open, there's a little gate inside of there, and the gate opens up. And then the gate closes back when you turn it to the right. But sometimes they drop. So in other words, the gate will come loose from the handle and it will block your way of your water to get in there. And when the gate drops, you're in trouble. Or in opposition, when you open it up and it breaks in the open position, you'll never get it closed. So I have gone to a ball valve and inside there, if I could show you, that ball just turns and it's a quarter turn type of ball valve. And it is a sharp bite, which is wonderful. So I'm just going to cut that out and put this sharp bite uh, valve in there, which is wonderful. So I'm glad I'm able to do that. There is an expansion tank that came out mm, maybe about 15, 18 years ago. We never had expansion tanks before. But basically if you have, so the water goes in through the house into your expansion tank right there via this line here so that it takes up for any, uh, lack of a better term, like a water hammer type of thing. I think it's ridiculous because an expansion tank, tank basically does the same thing as your TMP valve. Your TMP valve is a temperature and pressure valve, so if your pressure gets too high, that's normal. And then it would pop open automatically. If your pressure gets too high, it'll just be in the open position and it will leave the excess water out to outside because that's where this pipe ultimately goes is outside. Or if the temperature, you can't have an exploding water heater the way back in the turn of the century they used to have because if the temperature gets too high, it does the same thing. 
it just opens up automatically and lets all the excess water out. Anyway, that's the basics of a water heater. So you have your pressure um, tank, you have um, your water that goes in, and it gets heated, and then it goes out this line. Because I'm going to cut this pipe here, cut this pipe here, because as you can tell, I got polyvitylene, and I don't plan on. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So once I cut those pipes, I can put on my sharp bites, and my sharp bite has an opposing male nipple that these flexible lines will go on to very easily. And then my nipples will go into the new water heater right there. I'll take off my uh, my gas pipe here. I'm going to take that off and reposition that out of the way and put that back when I'm done. And what else can I show you? Um, and then the gas line. So the gas line, this is a copper line. Used to be flexible, but copper tends to get harder the long, longer, the older it is, it gets harder. So I don't know that I'll be able to flex this into the new water heater. So I bought a flexible line, gas line, just in case. Um, the first thing you want to do, I probably won't go through the whole process. After I've finished completing a certain thing, then I'll probably come back and show you what I've done. But step by step, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn off your water and this would be where you turn off your water usually because there's a bell valve that's a bell valve that's also like a pressure reducing type of valve so that bell valve is near where your water cutoff for your whole house is at i'm not going to mess with that because it's a gate valve also and if i shut it off the gate may drop and i don't want to mess around with that so i turn it off at the house i have no water going to it i turn off the gas a long time ago so there's no pilot going on then I open up my TMP valve, which is just turning this in the on position, and I could clearly hear water going out into the backyard. Then, after that's relieved a little pressure, then I put a hose on the end of this bib here, and once I put the hose on there, then I run it outside, and I open up this, and I don't have a handle here, so I just use the screwdriver to open that up, and that relieves all of the 40 gallons, most of all the 40 gallons that's in that tank. There might be some residual but if you try and move it with the water in there, it's not going to happen. So once that happens, and I've probably waited an hour, hour and a half before I remove the hose, now I'm ready to get started on the cutout process. And the cutout process first will get rid of this gas line. So I'm just going to take this off and take this off and then just remove this completely so that's out of the way. Then I'm going to cut this right here and cut it probably somewhere back there to get rid of that because I don't know how I'm going to fashion my new one in. I might do it with um, some pecs. I'm not sure at this point. Either which way, once that's removed, I'll prep my, um, my new water heater. After I get it out of the box, I'll prep that, meaning that I'll put all this stuff before it goes into this hole over here. I'll prep all of that stuff first, put all those connections on and blah, 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 and then I'll just kind of push it into there and then I'll figure out from there how I'm going to make everything happen. All I've done so far is I got rid of the gas line at both ends, got rid of it, and then I cut out the TMP line, which is back there going outside as I said before. So I cut that out, it's sitting over there, that's all I've done. But when I cut it out here, I made sure that I cut it out about the halfway mark. Oops, where was it? So it was down here at the half one mark, just in case I wanted to use it again, if everything lines up, that I can put a connector in there and make that happen. So once those two steps are done, a lot of this stuff is out of my way. Then I can get back to this um, tank, and I'm just going to cut that out. Um, in case any of you are old school, understand that they have new school, <laughs> new school pipe cutters. I love these. Actually, I like the ones that don't have... Uh, that aren't closing. They have the open end one. Those are a little bit more expensive. But these are just wonderful because all you do is clamp it on the pipe. And again, I'm going to go about halfway because I might end up using this pipe again. I don't know at this point. And then all you do is turn it. And you keep turning it until it comes loose. This water's got, or this tank has probably about, mm, about a gallon and a half, almost two gallons of water in it, which still should be in it. So it'll probably drop out of my hands. Oh yes, it dropped. Ugh. So then I got to take it out from the other end. I'm going to come off camera and pull this thing out. Now I have the tank removed, about the halfway mark. And then the last thing I have to do is release these guys. And these guys are going to be released, as I said, right below this piercing valve. Right around here is where I'm going to cut that out. I'm cut out right here. And oh yeah, I got to do that too. So I'm going to get started on that. 
My apologies for piecemealing this together and not showing you the process. I don't have access to a tripod or a second person. So all I've done since I've been off camera is I told you I got rid of that, that hole that was in the pipe and I gave myself enough bite for my sharp bite to go on to because remember I have a sharp bite that's going to slip into the copper. On the other end it has a male end which will fit into the female end of my flex line. Did the same thing over there. That's all I've done is cut those and then I started to back out these screws that go on to this vent. And the vent, this part of the vent actually just is kind of popped in there with a couple of ends of the metal into the water heater itself. Um, but since the new water heater already has this installed on it, I'm not going to worry about taking that out. I'm more worried about getting this flexed over enough, which I'll probably end up taking that part out just so that it's out of my way because I don't know how I'm going to fashion it back. Um, but yeah, take out these and then I'm going to take out these at the top and that'll get rid of this and then basically at this point I'll be free and clear with all my connections from my expansion tank to my supply going out to my house to my supply going into the water heater to the vent to the gas to the TMP pipe all this stuff has to be taken out you cannot escape doing all of this before you do anything else and then I'll move on to taking this out of the hole that it's in i.e. my closet and um, then I'll start taking the other one out of the box and prepping that so I'm just going to release that from there and release oh crap this is a lot of weight so I'm going to have to rig something up to hold this up because this whole pipe even though this part is free and clear the other part wants to drop down so I gotta rig that up I gotta go off camera again crud so what I've done since I was on camera less is I installed my uh, little ball valve um, which I'm really happy about and then I have cut out the entire water heater and started the prep process so the water heater is gone and the prep process only has to do with these sharp bites that go on to the end of the copper, I barely bottomed out on that one, so I hope that's enough bite. Um, and I put pipe dope on the end of these threads. Pipe dope, if you're not aware of, and I think... So, I have Teflon tape, and a lot of people use Teflon tape, and I, I think it's a good tape to have. I carry it in my tool pouch. And it's in the kit when you buy this, but I don't use Teflon tape. This is pipe dope. Whether you want to call it by its real name or not, doesn't matter to me. I was introduced to it back in the 80s as pipe dope. What I do is I pipe dope these connectors. So these, these nipples were actually came part of the water heater. And they're already integrated in. Like, like I don't want to take them out because they're already watertight. However they made it happen, they made it happen. So I'm not going to bother messing with them. Which means I have an extra set of nipples, <laughs> for whatever reason, that I ever need them. So I'm going to put pipe dope onto those nipples, those ends, because eventually I'm going to put these on top of here. Now, to be real, these actually have washers on the inside of both ends. So the pipe dope is not really needed, but I'm just old-fashioned, I guess, so I'd rather have it and not need it than not have it and need it. And that's what this is. So I pipe doped up these connections already, but again, with these rubber washers in here, it's almost not needed. Um, so I have a couple of choices. I can go ahead and put the, these in now, or I can put them up there first. Since these are not flexible lines, sorry, since these are not hard copper lines, I'll probably put these in first because they're going to be easier to get to with the water heater out of the way. Probably put those in first and then drag the water heater inside of there and put those onto there after I put pipe dope on those nipples. And that's it. That part will be all done. And then all I have to do is put on my gas line and put on my vent. And... Basically, I'm done at that point. Um, I have the TMP valve uh, already taken off and sanded down back here, but I'm not sure that that hard copper configuration is going to work the way it did before, so I'm not going to bother with that right now um, because I'm not really concerned that it's going to pop off on me. Um, brand new water heater. I can always put something on there at a later date. Another thing, too. This instruction sheet, if you follow to, if you, if you care to follow directions, it tells you to test this once in a while. And I'm telling you, don't do that. Because in my experience, anytime you've tested one of these, you break the seal. 
and these only cost about eight dollars to replace but i guarantee without a doubt that if you try and test this it will stay in the lock position and you'll be losing water all the time and then you're going to have to replace it so do not test it do not pull this lever in the up position don't leave it alone let line dog sleep but you can always make something happen later on with some pex or something and just bring it out of here and feed it into that line so that's the prep part the prep part is pretty easy putting everything back is going to be relatively easy this is a little bit new configuration so i'm probably going to take off the gas um, connector that i had on the old water heater and put it back on to here and hope for the best that that copper line will reach and if it doesn't then i have my backup flexible line right there You cannot use too much of this. I love it. With um, Teflon tape, you can go, well, I only went around three times. I hope three times is good enough. Let me go around five times, but you never really know. With uh, pipe dope, never have to worry about that. Because if you just slather it on there, guarantee you have a watertight seal every time. And that's why I prefer this over Teflon tape. Teflon tape for certain things like a shower head, things like that. I will use it, but otherwise, it's always dope, because it's dope. So things are looking up. It took me just a couple of minutes to set this inside of uh, the hole here. Um, very, very important, which is why they did it in really bright color here, blue for cold and red for hot. Don't pay attention to these lines, because all these lines have red on the end of them, so don't pay attention to that. It's more important that you get cold and hot right. And you're going to know that because your valve is always going into your water heater, no matter where your valve is at, is going to be the feed. That's going to be the cold. So if you follow that line to its end, we know that it's this one. So the cold is going to go here. And you see my line flexes a lot because it's polybutylene, but these flex lines flex a lot too. So I'm going to kind of turn it in a half circle to get it in there. Um, and then your hot goes on your hot. And then you tighten that down onto the nipples. And then the next step would be putting your cap back on here your vent cap and then the next step would be putting your gas line which I've saved and it looks like it's going to work out actually pretty good so I'm going to connect that up and I'm going to be able to bend that enough once I get it on to there I'm going to bend that enough to get it on to the valve once I take off that little T piece that I had on my other water heater because um, that'll fit up perfectly to that and that's a standard opening anyway so yeah just use the old one if you have it pretty easy process if I wasn't recording it it would have already been done by now so far I've spent about 35 minutes or so on it so yeah I'm probably gonna top out at my 45 minute normal mark it's just that this is gonna throw me I hate these I hate plastic line of any kind yeah I am old-fashioned old-school but there's a reason for it this is my gas line nipple that um, is gonna go in here I had to take off this is a dip tube here, so that catches all the excess trash and gunk that might be in the gas line. And you have to take these off separately because you'll never get this, obviously, to turn. This dip tube is way too long and it'll hit the side of the water here. You're also going to need some pipe wrenches because getting this off would no way happen without a pipe wrench. I had to sue the grip, so I actually had to grip it on the bottom part and then do the same thing on here to get it off. And then putting it back on is just a reversal of how you took it off. And as I said, this is a standard opening, half inch opening. And you're going to get it as tight as possible at the same time, try and get your gas line to line up the way it used to be and get your bottom end lined up the way that it needs to be. At this point, a pipe wrench isn't really needed, but it's in my, it's in my hand right now, so I'm going to use it anyway. Righty tighty, lefty loosey one more turn on it before I can't go any further. If I'm lucky. Uh, yeah, you don't want to over tighten it. Another little bit. Do the trick. There it is. Pipe dope for the same thing. As I showed you before, type, pipe dope is the best way to go if you had Teflon tape. Um, especially on gas, it's not, it's imperative that you get it tight as much as water, but Teflon tape, I wouldn't freak out about. 
as much as I would with water on the gas because you're going to test that wine too. Make sure you have no excess gas coming out of the wine. And then that goes at the bottom. And now we're basically done with the install process relatively easily putting it back as opposed to taking it out. Of course, I'm doing most of this one-handed anyway. Because I'm showing you how to do it. <laughs> and then you come back with your gas line and it should go right up there and then right down on there. And there'll probably be a little bit of bend out. And you can tell they use pipe dope before on here, which is what I prefer anyway. So I'm gonna dope that up, put that line on and I shall be back. Actually, I lied. I wanted to show you one other thing. This is a flare connection, and one of the reasons you really don't need that dope on there is because that flare actually keeps the tight seal. And there is a swagging tool, I call it a swagging tool, um, that you can make that flare happen with copper. Um, it's not going to work any other way if this is the type of line you have. And so you see that little taper that has there? It fits right into that taper that you created. So somebody along this line, along the way, had a swagging tool and made that happen. So not all gas lines are created equal. This is, um, if you have copper, don't cut or bend or kink this pipe and keep the ends as pristine as possible so they'll be gas tight. Again, uh, you're gonna have to manipulate this a little bit, but it's gonna fit right on there, just like it never even happened. Isn't that beautiful? So the way that I ended up doing this, um, I had extra poly that went up too far and these lines were too long to make things happen. So I had to cut out and yeah, I had to cut out some of the polybutylene up there in order for these lines to go straight and not these, the, these don't bend up because they're not copper. So I can't really twist the way I used to do with these flexible lines. So what I'm gonna do after the video is done, um, I'm, I still don't have my overflow tank, my expansion tank. So I'm gonna actually plumb that in because this is a cold side going in a T-sharp bite, if you will, and I'll just bring my expansion tank down here. It'll set somewhere around this area, and that'll take care of that. But I'm not going to do that right now because <laughs> i got a live stream today in seven minutes, and I'm going to be late for it. Um, but I'm basically all done except for my vent. On, on my overf overflow, on my TNP pipe, I'm going to come in again later on with... Um, I happen to have some uh, PEX and I'm going to get a couple of elbows and I'm going to run that PEX from there back over to there. I'm just going to bend it around and stick it in there and that's it. Just those two things left. And then turn on the water. Once I turn the water, I can light the pilot light and we are done. Well, where I last left off was winter time. I just wanted my water back. Now that it's springtime, I'm ready to go forward with the finishing process of installing a water heater. It has done very well for me. Thank you very much for the last three, three months? About three, four months. Um, so, I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna get to the pop-off. I call this the pop-off and that needs to go to the outside of the house which is that pipe in the wall I'm gonna to get to that and I'm gonna put in my overflow tank my expansion tank for those techie people out there that want to know the right term I'm gonna cut into that line right there because that is the line going into the house if you remember in the previous section I mentioned that I put in a great ball valve in there an inline valve um, and replaced it so I'm gonna cut probably about midway in there and I'm going to do that with this ratchet cutter, which makes life really, really easy. Once I cut that, I've got enough playroom where I'll be able to get in this uh, sharp bite T that will go right inside of there. And then I've already pre-cut my piece of PEX to go down from there. That's going to be first because that's going to be in the way of this. They're very close together. But on the back of that pipe in the wall, I have a straight um, sharp bite that's going to get pushed inside of there and then it's going to bring some of my other pecs, which I have plenty of, um, 
straight shot out to here. And I've already pre-measured, because I happen to have some extra three-quarter um, copper, I've already pre-measured for this to go up and over, and then it will go that direction with my extra piece of PEX. So, I've already set that in place and known exactly where my marks need to be in order for it to be the direction I want it to be. And I'm ready to uh, solder this together. Once I get that in, or once I get that soldered and it is cool, I'll be able to fashion it into that area and get this thing done finally. done. So if you follow this process, um, the first part of that video, I think I was into this uh, less than an hour. I think by the time everything was said and done, had I not been videotaping, it would have been 30 minutes um, to do this whole setup. And then because I, a couple parts I was missing, I had to go to Home Depot. So this last part, um, maybe another 10 or 15 minutes tops. So under an hour, you can do something like this. And the configuration that I set up doesn't have to be what you set up. Um, you could have easily gone from a sharp bite here to a 90 sharp bite to a 90 sharp bite. I had extra pipe laying around, so figured I'd use it because I can sweat pipe and some people can't. Um, this was pretty easy to get this to go outside. Um, and then the expansion tank was um, really easy too, as you already saw. So all said and done, an hour, hmm, maybe an hour some change at the most. If it took you two hours or three hours to do this entire thing, so be it. A plumber is not going to come out for anything less to do something like this. Anything less than about four to five hundred dollars. He wants a thousand dollar bill by the time he leaves and he's getting this water heater cheaper than you can. A typical plumbing charge just out of the phone book is going to be, this is a twelve to fifteen hundred dollar job for a typical plumber. So when everything is said and done, I've got $500 in material, um, some of the stuff I took back. So I have roughly $500 in material. You're going to save yourself $500, $700 by doing it yourself. I know this is a long video, but I know there's somebody out there, you or you or you, somebody, who has benefited from this knowledge and is going to save a boatload of money doing it themselves. And that's the whole point of the video. I have turned on the valve, checking for leaks, no leaks so far. It takes, um, roughly it's going to take probably about 
five to eight minutes to fill up this tank completely. That's at a point where you have water pressure going on and you're going to check for leaks when it's full. But then you're going to kick up the burner. And once the burner starts, now you have heat pressure and the water pressure and then that's when you want to check things also. Another thing too, I used to do back in the day, I'm not suggesting that you do this. This is what I do to check my gas lines because I told you we're going to test our gas line. <laughs> don't, don't do this at home. I do it because I used to be a fireman and I know that things aren't going to blow up. They'll just be a little catch or, you know, a little flame going that there's a leak and then I just tighten it up. Things don't, it's not like the movies, so yeah. But don't do it anyway. I, I shouldn't even have showed it because I know somebody out there is going to be stupid and try that and blow themselves up. Anywho, that's my disclaimer. So I'm going to let that uh, water feed in. Love these valves. And as soon as that's done, I'm going to check for leaks, which I won't have any. I never had before. There's always the first time, I suppose. And then I'm going to kick in my burner. Don't put the burner on until your tank is full, though. Steamy hot water. Ouch. Ooh, steaming up my lens, too. Love it. That was easy. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing from YouTube at all. If you're going to call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.